Hello everyone, I am Slow Rider. This is my world. Welcome, one and all. This is another voiceover video because I rather randomly and incoherently went through the topic when I was actually recording it. So yes, you've got the lovely images that I picked out from that particular ride and a voiceover from me. Hooray! This is the second part of the ride that I did testing out a couple of new apps because I've been having problems with Kalimoto, still not sorted. This particular one is the Detect app, which is, I think, a Swedish company. But it is sort of in the same lines as Reva in, and with elements of Kalimoto. There are, as far as I'm aware, no settings that you need to change at the start of this, which is good, uh, unlike Reva. But there are some similarities with Reva in that there is no location restrictions on the free version of the app like you get on Kalimoto. You, you, you get your particular area to use. If you're in the north of England, it's the northern area. In Scotland, it's just in Scotland, unless you pay for the premium version. This app, um, it is a global thing without region restriction on the free version, which is good. But there is a paid for version which has more features than the free app does. Uh, a brief note on journey planning. The website is very subtly different to the app when you're planning journeys. Generally speaking, I'm going to be talking about the app in this video, but I will make some notes of where I know there are differences with the website. In both cases, they use Mapbox open source mapping. On the website, you can make suggestions for changes to the maps. On the app, you can't, as far as I'm aware. And because it's the same map set as Reva, we have the same basic problems of the app having some interesting data on it. I'm going to screenshot, for example, where Pendleton Broad Street Station is because it shows up on this app as well. And so it's out of date station information, but it might be other areas where it's out of date. Website doesn't seem to be that problem. Again, I don't know what the problem is. Maybe there's two sets of data and they update one and they don't update the other. I don't know. And we're going to start where we did with the Reva app in the profile page. We have a settings cog in the top corner. That's the general app settings. You can set to the uh, miles or kilometers as the distance units. There's the account settings. If you want to put a vehicle on there, you can do that. There's, there's plenty of other options on there, but uh, most of them are basically are fairly standard. The import GPX one, I'm going to mention it here. On the app, you get three GPX file imports before you need to pay. On the website, there doesn't appear to be a limit, and any imports you do on the website don't appear to count against the app downloads. Was it uploads? Anyway, the the importing of GPX, yeah, it's it's not limited on the website, seemingly, but it is on the app. On the actual profile page, it'll tell you how complete your profile is. You really don't need to know that. How many rides you've saved, your total distance ridden, and time on the road and then you've got five little categories below the garages where you can display all your vehicles and then you have all the rides that you have been on you have all the rides that you have planned you have statistics based on when you've ridden and how far and and so on i don't really know what the use of that is but okay and then posts for a community which we will come to in a little bit probably quite soon actually there's a friends tab here where you can connect with your friends. I have no friends, so no one connected there. Um, and you can share the app with your friends if you really want to. I have no friends. We're going to go to feed, which is on the left-hand side of the bottom here. And it's essentially a bit like Facebook. Um, but obviously it's going to be bikers that you're dealing with here. All sorts of pictures and whatnot. You can even type in here, if you want to, to add your own comments. You can uh, look at them on a global level on a local level you can look at your friends and you can look at your own or create your own there the fourth tab at the bottom here is rides and uh, there are a number of things to note here i think you have another option to import gpx files at the top discover is worldwide routes although you can using the three little line uh, next to the search bar you can change some of the filters and settings for different routes but yes, you've got um, the Discover routes, you've got what your friends have put on, some of your favourites, and again, your tracked routes, and the routes that you've uh, only planned. Now on the actual route planning page, which is the diamond symbol in the middle, at the bottom, uh, you have settings, which are for the actual 
routings. We've got an auto pause, uh, the navigation settings, including speed limit and speedometer and such like. Um, voice setting. I found the voice to be quite quiet and I don't know why, but hey ho. The point you might want to look at is further down, um, which is waypoint rerouting mode. Curvy rerouting mode is a premium thing uh, for curvy routes, which are premium. I'll mention that again later, but the waypoint rerouting mode is one of two options. If it needs to reroute or recalculate the route at any point, you can either tell it to keep the waypoints that you had set um, that you haven't already been to, or skip them. Now the important point here to note is that if you select skip, it will find the nearest waypoint to go to and not necessarily the next one. So if you're doing a curvy route, like an S-shaped route or something like that, or a round route, it might be that it resets to a place where you miss a portion of your ride just because the nearest waypoint isn't the next one. So, for example, if you're on a, a round route where you're ending up at the place you started and before the first waypoint it needs to reroute or recalculate, it may direct you straight back to the destination because that's the closest waypoint that's still on your route, that's still to be met. But if you're going on a sort of an A to B ride, there really is no reason why you can't just put that on because it, it will help if your waypoint is in a road closed area or something like that. Anyway, that's map settings. Uh, obviously, you've got a little compass there, so which way is north. A little icon to center on where you are. Now, the one below that, I think, is safe tracking and emergency contacts, I think. So emergency contacts and friends, so that if you have an accident, they can be sent information. I haven't set that up. Don't really know what it's about. Uh, obviously, at the top, you've got the search box for where you want to go. You can just hold your finger down on the screen. Um, or you can type it in. You can go to plan route or round trip as well. There are a number of options for actually planning the route out. Now for round trip, it brings up a page which is very similar to how Kalimoto does random routes. You've got a distance, you've got a direction, etc. or completely random. However, it's important to note that the actual route planning setup is a premium setup, so although it'll let you go this far, it won't actually let you generate the route unless you've paid for the premium app. If you go into plan route, you can choose your destination. You can also add via points or you can add points after your initial destination if you've got somewhere else to go. At the bottom, you have a number of options. Uh, so you have fastest route, uh, fastest route without highways and then twisty route. And if you select curvy roads, you'll it'll tell you you need the premium app to do it but it's there for you to use the more options are avoid ferries and avoid toll roads you expect uh, but also avoid unpaved roads i don't know what it defines as unpaved roads but it is something i mentioned on the kalimoto video they didn't have that so it is nice to see that there's a avoid unpaved roads option anyway when you're finished setting up on this page uh, click back on view on map and it will plan out a route for you on this stage, at this stage, you can tell it if you want to go fastest routes. Again, you can change it again there, or um, routes avoiding highways. You can even change around which direction it is. So if you've accidentally put in origin or destination the wrong way around, you can just flip it around. And I think you'll flip around all the intermediate waypoints as well. I've not tested that, but I think you will. Uh, you've also got on this page now the distance of the route, the time it should take, and the arrival time you should get there. You also have a little symbol on the right here for which is a, an old floppy disk for saving the route. And if you click on that to save it, you'll be asked for a name, a description, where it is, and you can put in your start date, your end date, etc., etc. if you want to save it. Once you click start navigation, it will start giving you information, which is nice. I found that when you start navigation, the first voice you hear is American, the first direction, but then after that, it will be British. A uh, quick note on crash detection, crash detection active here at the top of the screen. Worth pointing out, I think, that you have to turn off battery optimization to get that. If you have battery optimization on in the main app settings in, in, in your phone, it won't let you do the crash detection. Now something that Detect has that not a lot of other apps have is an actual set of uh, instructions here which you can change around. So 
what I've got set up is the next instruction, which is the one after the current instruction, just to make that clear. So if your current instruction is turn left, the next instruction will be the one after that turn left. It won't tell you how far away it is, but it will tell you that's what it is. So you can better prepare in, on the road where you are, I think. Other options are how many miles you've driven, how much time you spent driving, uh, how much time it thinks you have remaining, how many miles it thinks you have remaining, and the altitude that you're at. Um, I guess it's up to you which one you would prefer. I think miles remaining and the next turn will be the ones I would go for. Uh, interesting, it won't let you have two of the same display, so it'll know which one is in each display, and as you cycle around, it'll not allow you to select it twice. I quite like that. It does have a speedo at the bottom left corner of the page. Uh, it will also tell you the speed limits as well down there, unless you turn these off in the options menu. And you'll notice instead of a save button, you've got a volume button, which you can mute the ride with. Uh, there is an auto pause feature as there is with Rever. So when you stop, uh, the app will stop counting the ride time. Um, and you will get a chance to finish the road at that point as well, though you'll be riding, so you probably won't. So one thing I do quite like, at the bottom right-hand corner, is they have a hazards button, so you can report where there are hazards on the road. Gravel, slippery road, roadworks, road damage, object on the road, accident, or something else. What effect this has on the route planning, I don't know, it might just be that it, it warns you of an approaching thing. Um, but it's nice that it's there, it does have, I think if you click on each one, you'll get to describe the hazard uh, for an object on the road or if it's road works, etc. So that's that's quite a good feature. I think that they've, uh, I think Waze has that, Calimoto doesn't, Driver doesn't, that does. I, I do quite like that. And in the very bottom left-hand corner, you've got an arrival time. When you do want to end the ride, obviously you'll auto pause, you click end ride and it'll bring up the route that you've chosen and it'll give you the option of saving it or deleting it. It'll tell you how many miles you've done, how long it took you to do it, what your average speed was, and your elevation. You can also trim the beginning or the end of the ride, so if there's any part of the beginning or end that you don't want other people to know, say where you live or where you work or anything like that, you can just trim that off. You can name it, give it a description, say where it is that you're going. You also get to say what type of ride it is you know forest coastal area off-road just fast roads mountain curvy etc etc there's eight options there you can multiple click them so it's not just one of them you can say it was an off-road mountain ride on curvy roads etc um, you can add pictures you can give it a five star rating and then it gives you a set of statistics below that and then as i say you can save it or delete it and there we go, that's the basic run through of the app. I've done two rides with this particular app now. And as a general rule, I think it's quite good. The instructions are reasonably clear. As I say, the, the American voice is, is the first instruction. And then I think I've heard it randomly in places, but not very often. It goes to a British accent after that. One of the issues I had on the first ride, I, th I think it's a loss of GPS signal where I happen to have a waypoint. So it didn't recognize that I had gone through the waypoint. Consequently, it didn't register that, it didn't take it off. And so when it recalculated, it tried to recalculate back to that spot because I had it on keep the waypoints rather than um, skip them, which was a little bit annoying, frankly. Um, and then went back into the planned ride and selected join in to the middle of the ride rather than starting from the beginning if i remember rightly that's what i did and then i could carry on the ride as normal but that was slightly annoying on the second ride um of which i'm probably going to do a video very soon the app seemed to get quite confused um i've looked back at the planned route that i'd set and the route it tried to take me on wasn't even close to that in fact i don't even think the waypoint was set up right so i don't quite know what happened there i don't know if that's a glitch in the matrix or a problem with the app or some such it needs more investigation but it's the only time that that's happened um i've been riding backwards and forwards through work and granted it's not multiple waypoints but it didn't have that problem then so i don't quite know what the issue was maybe i accidentally moved the waypoint i'm not sure but it was a little bit weird. So there's a possibility that it's a little bit flaky. But I think overall, in fairness, this is actually quite a good app. There are a number of features I do like that put it way above the Rever app in terms of whether I would use it. 
is it still Kalimoto level? No, not really. Um, I think there are things that Kalimoto does that this doesn't, which makes it a better app for randomly riding around. And I think something like Waze probably has the edge on an A to B ride, particularly because of live traffic updates, because it's not open source mapping. But this is better than ever, and I think with it being uh, region free, the longer rides, if I'm going through England to Scotland, this would be the better app to go for. For that sort of ride uh, you could still plan it on kalimoto and import it onto the website of detect onto your account there's nothing no harm in doing that i think that's probably what i'll end up doing so i think you know if you if there's a proper working kalimoto if i can get this my kalimoto working properly this will be a good secondary backup i think Reva would fall into a third place but overall yes i do quite like the app I, the the community feature is interesting to say the least I don't know how much I use it, it doesn't seem to be used that often, but it is an interesting spin on the whole community aspect of motorcycle riding. I do quite like it, I'll be honest, I do quite like the idea. But would I use it? I, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, that's my brief run through of uh, Detect. I hope you have enjoyed, if you hope you've got something from it, maybe you want to try it out for yourself. Let me know what you think of it if you already have. Until the next video though, thank you very much for watching, do appreciate it, be good humans, ta-ta for now.